So if you're thinking about running for office, um, I th there are a couple of things that are important to me about the kind of leaders I want to see elected. So if I were sitting down and having a conversation with a candidate or somebody who's thinking about putting together a campaign or making a run for it, um, I want to know what's driving their interest in in politics, and I, I actually want, I'm looking for a commitment to public service, I'm looking for a commitment to social change, and I'm looking for um, a first and foremost interest in the public good. And I, if we're talking like cross-partisan um, or non-partisan, um, there are a lot of different definitions of how, how people perceive the public good. And I think there are a lot of people whose political leanings or ideology or viewpoint are very different than mine. And they have um, served in the Senate or in Parliament or on city councils um, for a really long time. And even though they may have a different approach to what's best in their neighborhood, I think that they're motivated by um, a belief that they're doing good in the world. And, and that is um, something that's critically important to me. Um, in my life, I have probably had thousands of conversations with people who are interested in politics or who aspire to um, political office or have a lot of opinions about politics. And it is um, absolutely amazing to me how many times people will say, oh yeah, I want to run for office one day. I'm, I'm going to law school because I want to run for office. Um, and then if you dig into that conversation with like, what is it that you really care about in the world? What do you... What do you see around you that's not working for you now? And how do you think you could be part of changing that? Um, the number of people who like shrug their shoulders and they're like, well, I don't know. I just, I just always thought that I'd like be a natural leader and I'd be good at that. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not interested in working with candidates who want, want the position because it's a job or um, because it's cool or because um, they just want power for power's sake. I'm really interested in um, candidates who have identified an opportunity for us to make our community better and have some sort of plan or idea about how their role in that is critical. There's a couple of pitfalls, um, and, there are, um, and I see them really on, on two sides of the spectrum here. One is pitfalls that get in the way and stop really amazing leaders from actually making the jump and taking the risk and running. And then, um, and then on the other side are people who care about the right issue who take the wrong approach to how they're going to run. Um, so um, clear that there's a common ground between the values, my values and the values of the candidate and what they're hoping to achieve. Um, I look for them to know what they're getting into and like it's important to me that they know what they're getting into in a very realistic way. Um, because in a lot of ways, public service is a thankless job. No good deed goes unpunished. And it will, the going will always get tough. Um, so if you're asking me or you're asking a group of volunteers um, to put their sweat equity into backing you and helping you achieve something, I want to know that that person's all in and, and going to stick with it. Um, so that's one of my tests. And so I guess a pitfall is some people make the jump without really contemplating what, what this mission is that they're embarking on <laughs> and what kind of sacrifice is going to be in there and how it's going to impact um, their family, like whatever, their, their group of close people, whatever that looks like, um, whether, yeah. Um, so that's, that's an important piece, understanding the, the, the role you're getting into, um, shared values, Another piece of it is um, the ability to listen. Um, I have in my life, whether it's an issues-based activist campaign or an electoral campaign, the number of times you meet someone who is um, deeply passionate and thinks they know the answer and that, you know, and they're probably charismatic and can pull together a little bit of a cult of personality, um, but actually community building and social change and and good governance doesn't come from 
somebody who's essentially fascist in their approach. Like, I want to work with people who understand um, that their primary role is to listen to the needs of their communities or their electors or the people they're seeking to be advocates for or represent. Um, so, and I want to know that that's a core value for them about how they're going to approach things. And I want to work with people who understand that um, if you're ever the smartest person in the room, that's probably a problem and you need to um, widen your circle and bring some more people in. Because holding public office, whether, whether it's school board, whether you're a mayor or a reeve or an alderman, whether you're a city councillor, or whether you're um, in the prime minister's office, um, you are faced every day with um, incredible complexity and myriad of issues and competing interests and things that need to be balanced and taken into consideration. And that actually, you need a board <laughs> or a circle of advisors. And I feel strongly that you need to be representing the people who have empowered you. Um, so I, I think a pitfall is people who um, have decided this is the right answer, this is the way forward, and I'm just going to steam ahead and bulldoze. And it's, I don't think that leads to good governance. It's not to say you're not electable. I, I'm not interested in working with people who have that approach to governance.